All right, time to dissect the big stories of the day. Joining me now is my panel, Queensland LNP and member for Broadwater, David Crisofulli, and CEO of the uh, Cattlemen's Association of the Northern Territory, Ashley Manakaros. Gentlemen, thank you for joining me on this Good Friday. Uh, David Crisofulli, I'll go to you first. Political story, Don Harwin. Uh, referred to on the front page of today's Telegraph as the Beach Minister, sorry, the Beach House Minister, has uh, fallen on his sword. Now, he's offered his resignation to the Premier Gladys Berejiklian and she's accepted that. I guess he was under a fair bit of pressure, wasn't he? He was. Uh, it was the right decision from him and certainly the right decision from his boss to accept that resignation. Uh, politics is about perception and if the perception is that you think you are above others, if the perception is that the rule applies to somebody else but not you, if the perception is that what you say you don't really believe, well it's all over and that's what happened in this case and the right decision's been had. Ashley, uh, David's right, perception is everything in politics. This wasn't a good look, particularly at a time when everyone else is doing the right thing, or mostly everyone else is doing the right thing. I guess now the pressure will very much come on Brad Hazard after the Ruby Princess fiasco. Yeah, it is. It'll be interesting to see how the, uh, the Ruby Princess uh, inquiry actually unfolds. Um, I guess, you know, in regards to Don Harwin, um, what's happened to him is the equivalent of being caught drink driving. Um, it's a thousand dollar fine here in the Northern Territory if you um, if you uh, break those rules, and uh, they've ad the media has adopted the name of Covidiots. But in terms of the Ruby Princess and what happens there, um, <laughs> there's going to be a long drawn out investigation, and, and I would say to you that uh, there has to be a thorough investigation. Although I would say to you that there is a breakdown going to occur, not only at the federal level but also at the state level. Um, I'd be surprised if Border Force uh, didn't have a hand in some of it. I don't know all the facts, obviously, um, but I think that uh, people are going to have a, a closer look at that. Um, it is just not something that occurs easily, and I would say to you that there will be a number of people who would be uh, wanting to put their case forward and, and perhaps try and uh, exonerate themselves. Ashley, uh, I know you love your footy, uh, as, as all you Northern Territorians do, but uh, May 28 has been slotted in as the date for the NRL to resume. Now, I see the Chief, uh, Deputy uh, Chief Medical Officer, uh, the Commonwealth Deputy Chief Medical Officer today had a bit of a crack at the NRL saying, look, uh, I don't think that's a very good idea. It is ambitious, isn't it? It is certainly ambitious because no one does know what the dates will be. Um, but perhaps, you know, there is as much a psyche as pointing to people towards a sense of hope to actually give them something to work towards that will actually be uh, a positive for them. I don't know that that's the reason the NRL has done it, but perhaps, that, perhaps let's uh, look optimistically that that is the reason that they've done it. Um, because at the moment, uh, sitting at home in my house, uh, Netflix has absolutely... Uh, copped a bashing, so has Stan, so have all the others, and uh, so has Foxtel. So I've got to say to you, if uh, May 28 is the date that I can look forward to for a bit of rugby league and football and blokes, big blokes running <laughs> into each other, then, then that date will suit me. <laughs> now, David Crisofulli, I know you're a very, very nippy little half in your days there for the Ingham, uh, whatever they were, the Redbacks, but uh, uh, do you think May 28 is, uh, is a little bit ambitious? Uh, firstly, I was too slow to be a back and too weak to be a forward, so put that to one side. But, uh, Gleeso, I love ambition as much as the next guy, and I love a uh, vision, and I love my rugby league. But it does seem to be a little bit putting the cart before the horse. They've picked the date, but we still don't know where it's going to be played. We, we have ruled out the two conference options by the sounds of things this morning, but, but we don't know where it's going to be played. The, none of the premiers have agreed, none of the national cabinet have said, yes, this can occur. Um, it, it just seems that uh, in their quest to create a bit of momentum, maybe they're going a little bit too quickly and, and haven't ironed out a few details just yet.